All right, here we go. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Card Hedge Podcast. I'm your host, Omar, a.k.a. Retro Hoops. I got the gorgeous JD with me, Hulkamania brother. I see you got the Hulkamania joint on today. That's right, baby. That. <laughs> I'm a real American. <laughs> is that so? Is that like okay? So I just recently became a citizen. Is that something I got to do now? I got to go get a whole. Nah, yeah, you, you know what you do and wave an American flag and put. There you go. Well, I got the American dun, dun, flag. Dun, dun, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the Hulkster baby. The Hulkster, he never he do, it doesn't he doesn't eat your vitamins, kids. You know, <laughs> I got another one that I got another one that says uh, Hulk's rules. And it's oh, like really? his like Ten Commandments of Hulk Hogan. It's fantastic. So Hulkamania was maybe I'd say about uh, maybe six or seven years too late, too early for me when I got into yeah. when I got. I mean, I was a big NWO kid. I was a big yeah. LWO. Kid. I was a WCW kid. So Hulkamania. How old are you? How old are you? Thirty-seven. No, thirty-eight. I'll be thirty-nine next year. Uh, all right. Wow, I'm older than you. A little bit, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, how old are you? I, now I understand why I'm smarter than you. I'm older. Well, than well, you. How old are you? Uh, Hold on. Uh, that's private. Come on. I can't, I can't tell you. I'd have to kill you. No, I'm 41. <laughs> okay, you're not that much older than no, me. No, no. I thought you no. were like... I'm like, 40, I'm like four years older than you and 20 years stupider. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, dude, I'm I'm pretty jacked right now, man. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, we, we got to... You know what? I am too. Because we got we got to... We owe this man uh, some airtime. That's right. We, I think so, here's gaffed. the deal. A couple of weeks ago, or a couple of episode, episodes ago, maybe, maybe episode two or episode three, we were talking about the idea of prepping cards and 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 you know doing this whole idea of prepping and then buying you know the kit from Kurt's Card Care. And I don't think I did a very good job of representing what was in this kit, or there may be some ambiguity to what I said. So um, I, this is something I've, I've been wanting to get him on for a while. So uh, we'll 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 bring him on right now. So welcome everybody. Kurt's Kurt from Kurt's Card Care. There we go. What's going on, my man? Oh my, Kurt. JD, good to see you, fellas. Dude, you too, you, buddy. I think uh, we're gonna have to start like a like a running tab to see who's got like the best background oh, for man. our guests. Yeah. Well, it's not me. That yeah. is epic back there. What you got going on, man? Talk. T- tell us a little bit about where you're at and what you're what, what, what's what's going on back there, man. Well, thanks, man. You know, great to see you guys, and uh, you're sure I'm excited to be here, man. And uh, so cards, I think, is obviously what most of the viewers are going to know me from. Yeah, on yeah here, for sure. Especially working on them and making them look better. But like I uh, I think I got like uh, when I was joking around earlier when I said uh, I think I got to about 14. And that's like kind of the hobbies I stuck with for the rest of my life. Uh, yeah. so, like <laughs> Music. Uh, I come from Metro Detroit, grew up in a big musical family. And nice. This, I was related to people that, you know, were good at good musicians and good at playing instruments. So I picked that up at a young age and it's something I love to do. So I'm in a studio where, yeah, I got a lot of um, instruments down here and stuff like that. And, right on. Um, and then and it's also like my card room, you know? So there you go. if anybody, uh, you know, I, I know I joke about all my crazy card ideas. And I talk about humidity a lot and how to use it and how to make sure your cards, you know, like if you're going to do this or that, but I, I, I keep this is like the card room and the guitar room. Cause I have to, keep it the uh, the atmosphere nice and friendly but yeah this is like my hangout man this is where i nice. work every day it's where i do all the card care stuff i just got a raisable check this out you guys oh you I got like got... a like one of those ergonomic oh, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> hold, on. It, hold on it goes down too wow. Wow. Oh. wow there you now, go damn stand up and work on my cards you know there you so. go you know, nice I, man I, I like geeking out with technology and stuff like oh, that I'm in, yeah, I'm, cool. I'm in the same boat man that's pretty yep. good pretty awesome dude yeah well listen man. I, you know you and i have been in conversation for quite some time right i think initially oh i want to say maybe it was maybe like six or eight months ago that i did uh you know just somebody sent me your your instagram yeah. and said hey uh you know check this out i really want to get your thoughts on this and you know what do you think about it and you know this idea of you know, uh, wiping down cards and, you know, trimming cards and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, let me check out the Instagram. So I checked out your Instagram and I started going through all your stuff. And I, I remember, I think I initially reached out and I was like, Hey man, like I'm, I'm, I really dig what you're doing here. I'm going to do a video on it. Do you want to come on and chat? And, uh, and I, I think, I think you might've thought that I was going to like, you know, like grill you about it. Like, what yeah. do you, you know, what are you doing here? You know, 
but really I was I was just a fan and I, I think you very very politely and and and, and very nicely declined you're like nah I think I'll you know just yeah I appreciate the offer but I think I'll I'll pass and things like that regardless I did the video got quite a bit of uh, feedback from a lot of folks and uh and then I think you reached out afterwards and you were like oh man like I I I didn't think that you were going to have that type of approach to to I, what I'm doing I liked it Omar yeah. I thought <laughs> you I thought you were I was like I want I'm when I bring up the, the music stuff, man, like I, I was fortunate to work at a great radio station for years here in Metro Detroit, too. And uh, so, like, I'm very picky about broadcasting and how, things, how if, if it keeps my attention. I watched your show and then I watched the other ones. I was like, he's good. I like him. And, and, <laughs> that means a lot coming from you, man. Hey, I mean it. I mean it. And then, like, I also thought, like, yeah, I think I, there could be I kind of live in my own little world sometimes where I don't yeah. know a lot of. Uh, stuff I like cards are my favorite thing about card collecting you know like yeah. I love cards I'm kind of a homebody because this is the stage of life I'm in I have I got three, Same here. I have three kids you know I, I don't get out a lot and so I don't have a lot of you a lot of time to really like I didn't know what retro hoops was before this like is my agreed yeah I I you're a well respected good host and you have a bunch of shows and stuff I was just like oh I, I get a lot of requests usually people hit me up every day can I send you a bunch of bent up cards for you to fix or something yeah. like that? You know, and yeah, yeah, or yeah. I've got this out. one card. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or, or I do have a lot of people saying, Hey, like, uh, would you, I had a lot of people ask to be on their podcast or interview. And it was like, it seemed like divisive. It was like, right, right, come right. Come on here and tell us why you think why? it's okay to clean up a card. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just do this on my Instagram channel and I figured yeah. some fellow collectors would be interested. <clears throat> And then it got pretty popular, you know, so yeah. I was a little shy for a while, but uh, you're a good guy. And I no, I appreciate I, that, man. To to you. I, 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 but I really think it's important that, you know, aside from aside from the product, right, that, that you sell, um, you, you have some some background that kind of got you into this product. Right. So, yeah, uh, you, you you talked you and I talked a little bit about uh, kind of uh, how you how you kind of came up with this stuff, how, how you how you ended up putting this kit together. Uh, because you you have you know uh, obviously an automotive background. We talked a little bit about it off yeah. off, uh, off camera. So talk talk a little bit about that, man. Talk talk about how kind of you you sort of backed into this, right? Yeah, so it's it, it is kind of strange, you guys. And thanks for asking. And uh, I really give like I don't have this like well polished answer to this. You know what I mean? It's yeah, that's, that's, like, uh, it's we got like, it's all this like stuff that I've done. That we're not like, polished either. Yeah, yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're yeah. not polished. <laughs> I, I like that though, you know. So like, I really give a big tip of like what I do, what Kurt's card care is to my mom and dad almost equally. Like, right. so my dad was a badass and he was a race car driver and mechanic. And you know, like when you see guys dress up like greasers, like my dad was a real one, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. So like he was one of those guys and um, great with motorcycles, vehicles, just like, and knew how to drive. Right. And so that was cool. So like, that's what got me into like automotive my family owned a Dodge dealership too. Okay. So like was there every day, you know? And then my mother, my mother is an incredible artist, like anything like portraits, awesome. great stuff. My mom's a, uh, my mom's a great pianist, um, just musical. She, my mom looks like Stevie Nicks. So like nice, cool gypsy, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then my dad's like a badass. And so like, that was like the, that's the core. That's so like growing up, man, working in the family cars and dealership, like it, we lived in a small town, but it was a big business. And just as part of it was like detail and yeah. cleaning, like there's a ton of cars to clean. If it rains, yeah. you got to clean them. You know, it's like yeah. it's a lot of work. So putting together cleaning formulas and polishes and waxes and all count, rubbing compounds, all kinds of stuff. Right. I was just around it. So I just like knew how it all worked, how to use it, how to make it. So that's kind of like my dad's side coming in. I was always mechanical. You know, I'm always right. working on stuff. So then my, I, I was blessed to be able to get the gene from my mom of knowing how to do music and art. Mm -hmm. So then, so that's almost like a cool thing, like in certain ways, but it's also like makes me like crazy in other ways. You know, like I can't even like even as a kid, as a collector, I didn't know there was no grading or, right, right, or right. whatever. But if I had a card that was off centered, like I couldn't stop thinking about it like yeah. it was almost like yeah i can't fix it and it's locked in this position yeah but, you know it's like i remember seeing like bo jackson remember when bo had the shoulder pads oh the yeah pads? oh yeah it's the greatest card ever greatest yeah. right so like i would i would i would find those like i remember i had one that was off center and my buddy had one that was like 
he had his dirty Dorito fingers all over. And I'd be like, I'd trade him my off-centered ones for his centered ones. I'd go home and prep them up. Clean them up. And it was yeah. a, nice. It wasn't, it had nothing to do with money or business. Right. Or, right. Or, right. And those things, those cards were like egregiously off-center too. Like when they oh, were off, so dude, bad. like so bad. Yeah, that left border would be like this fat. You're like, what, oh. what happened here? Like yeah. what happened? Yeah, yeah. And it was yeah. like, so I always had this like eye for symmetry and detail and perfection. And then I always had this like, thing like if it's not there fix it and learn how to do mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so like it was just uh i would say probably in 2010 ish is when i started opening up my cards again because from like from 2000 to like 2010 i was like entering adulthood you know what i mean right I yeah, I was in my 30s and, you know, tw late 20s, 30s and stuff and got married, had kids, all this stuff. So I didn't get rid of all my stuff, but I put it on pause. Mm -hmm. Then when I got back into it in like 10, I noticed that Beckett, anything with a Beckett label and had a number on the corner that made it uh, more valuable, you know, the grade, right? And I was mm -hmm. like, Ooh, I've never learned about this. So I got a bunch of my cards because I always collected good stuff. And I sent them in and I got hammered. I got like, uh... I got like 9.5 centering. 9.5 corners um nine edges seven surface seven surface. Oh. so i'm like what the heck is going on here you know i'm like yeah. and i'm competitive you know so i'm like i want that number in the corner to be the yeah, highest yeah. number yeah, you yeah. know <laughs> and so i would go to card shows and around metro detroit and guys would be telling me uh well, you know, like I, uh, you know, get some microfibers, breathe on them real good or this guy uses windex or this guy uses water or this guy uses a uh, turtle wax and all this stuff and then uh i was like there's got to be somebody that makes this stuff you know i'm like what the heck yeah yeah, yeah yeah and then it's like for years you guys like i use my little you know i'm, the, I'm at my workstation so like i use my my little corner and edge and surface tool to work on things and dents just kind of like in an auto shop there's tools yeah. to work on just a yeah, pdr yes right so paintless, I'm like, paintless, for those of you that don't know pdr is paintless dent removals it's like a yeah. A technique where they massage the actual metal exactly. on a exactly. dent that hasn't been compromised in the paint. It's just because if the paint's cracked, you can't do it's that. It's a wrap. Yeah, you it's got yeah, that's, that's body shop. Yeah. But if there's a soft little ding, you know, I because I, I would work on my vehicles. Like I was big into like I just always wanted things to look good and work well. So yeah. I can't just check that at certain hobbies. Like right. my cars are flawless. Yeah, my yeah. vehicles are flawless. My yeah. car, like I've just always been that way. And then like. um that's in your DNA. It is, man. It's just, yeah, yeah. and it's a blessing and a curse. And so, right, like, right. I started. So then, in like 2010, when I started getting hammered on these grading scores, all these guys started throwing all these like ideas because, like, you guys know, you guys are collectors. You go to a card show, everybody talks shop and tells you right, stuff. Right, right. And 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 it was like this common, like, kind of like talk or like these little tips, but it was almost like. Don't tell anybody I put some Windex on a card. And I was like, What's yeah. uh, the taboo of it all. And I, and I just in my heart of hearts, I was like, well, you know, I've seen shows where people like trim up these cards and get in trouble. Like, and yeah. people are like pay, screwing up with old paintings and, you know, doing all this. Yeah. I'm like, it doesn't seem like Windex would be that out of line. So anyways, I'm like, I tested everything you could buy from the store. Right. And it all sucked. And some of it was okay. It was just inconsistent. And then I was just like, I know how to make formulas and compounds where I don't have to put in dyes or any sort of abrasive. Like hard or, abrasives. Yeah. yeah. Like I know how to build everything from the base up. And I started making stuff for myself. And because none of my friends around here even collect. So I'm like this. Uh, island, uh, dude. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it's like, I'm just here. And so yeah. I, find, I find joy of working on a table of cards and my friends would be like, Hell what do you, you do? do? Like, yeah. Work on baseball cards. Listen, my wife comes in here all the time, and I have stacks because my thing is sorting. I love sorting. Right? Yeah, and so I have this mountain of cards, and she's like, she just comes in and looks at me and just like shakes her head and walks away. And then I'm like, what? And she goes, what are you doing? And I go, I'm yeah. sorting. And she goes, sorting what? Oh, I go, you, you don't get it. Leave you know, me alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a common bond, you know. Yeah. It's and like so, Jesus. And so, you know, I just started uh, making out, making some stuff. And then all of a sudden, man, I got like, because I was big and I'm a huge Tom Brady fan, big Brady collector. That's right like a guy from when he was in college until until his daily struggles right now. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hurting right now. But and he's and so, right like, now. I remember Brady Chrome rookies were like the ones I'd get my hands on when I was like in that stage of the game. And remember, they were like 
40 bucks, you know, back in those days, you know, yeah. so like I'd buy a bunch of them and then I would test all my little compounds on them. And then I noticed that like when you remove like the abrasive side of things and just, you know, don't add a bunch of extra stuff that doesn't need to be added. It was like making the front of them look brand new again. And mm -hmm. it wasn't like eating away the surface or doing anything like that. And it would remove like, it was like literally like a, just a conditioning treatment that I was trying mm -hmm. to make. And it took me a while. And I started doing that to my Chrome cards and they would just look awesome. So then I started mm -hmm. submitting them and uh, I started getting the nine fives and I was like, all right, this must be how the guys. There we go. Them. Yeah. And then for years, I just used a tube, just a, you know, even if people don't have to buy my stuff if they don't want, you know, but I mean, if you just got a five sixteenth vinyl tube, you can hold that and work on corners and edges where on plastic cards, because this is plastic and you're not going to scratch it up or hurt it. You know, it's just mm -hmm. it's a little bit of science with a little bit of technique. Like technique. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just knowing what you're doing. You wouldn't want to use something made out of metal on a plastic card. You're right. Exactly. The hell out of it, you know, but there's I, I didn't like I said, Kurt's card care was not a lifelong business dream. It sure. was like something I always did. And then all of a sudden it was like, wow, there's a tribe of guys out there like me that like this stuff. But that, that isn't that like the best, the, like the, the typically the best businesses or the best ideas come from those types of scenarios, right? Where it's you're just wild, like, dude. It's I'm wild. doing this. It works great for me. Right. And then all of a sudden, maybe you put it out there a little bit. And then all of a sudden you find this huge group of guys that are like, well, wait a second. That's actually pretty cool. Can you, can you yeah. sell that? Can you do you know, and then boom, and there you go. You know? That was the watershed moment, get fellas. Like, so the reason, because I have people say, You've made this for so long, where have you been? Well, A, I didn't really think it was as cool, I guess. Thank I thought you. it was just something yeah. I did, you know? Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. My hobby. it's my hobby. And I like yeah. creating cards and showing off my cards and having my card buddies be like, Thumbs up, and cool, and great Brady, yeah. you know? Yeah, I just yeah, yeah, yeah. out with it, you know what I mean? So then the, um, I have like a handful of buddies around the country that mainly through Tom Brady buddies. Yeah. They collect cool stuff. And I would always work on their cards for them. It was just like kind of yeah, you know, send them over. Like, I got you covered. Yeah. Yeah. And they would and they would send me like a card as a present on my birthday or this, you know, at least develop nice. that, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Develop that bond, you know? Yeah. And so sure. like we'd do stuff for each other. And I would be the card dude, the, the repair and clean. And um, so then COVID creeps up. Long story short, you guys won't even do this, but like what I did for the last 20 years was me and my best friends ran a full-time wedding and event business, DJs, photographers, and videographers. We started with five of us. We had over a hundred people under the umbrella wow. going into COVID. We would service wow. over 2000 weddings a year. So I was always in entertainment and bands and music and stuff like that. Right. So then all of a sudden COVID hits, all the gigs go off the books. And all my phone is ringing every day going, Kirk, can we send you 50 cards? Can we send you 100 cards, mm. 50 cards? Mm. And I'm like, um, this is cool that people respect me with their cards, but it's also causing me a lot of stress because I don't yeah, yeah, clean yeah. 100 cards a day. It's not what I want to do. Yeah, me. yeah. So, like, I'm just out, like, I don't know, COVID, having a COVID walk, you know, wondering, like, what the hell's going on at the world and when's this all going to happen? And the phone rings again while I'm in the middle of this walk, and it's a buddy of mine. He's like, hey, man, you know, I got a hundred cards I want to send into PSA. And I'm just like, I'm going to teach everybody how to do this because I don't want to do all this anymore. Right. And, and and right at that second, man, I'm like, because I never had a, I never had a company logo or a name. Right, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Card guy. And then right there, I'm like, you know what? I, I'm not going to clean 50 cards a day. I'm going to teach as many people that are interested in learning how to do this. What, in my opinion, an ethical, safe, and easy way to like yep. do this. Yeah. And it's like the saying goes, right? It says, uh, I think there's a saying that goes something to the effect of in a gold rush, you want to be the guy selling the shovels. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know? yep. and, and then even from like, you know, just going back, you know, just like with an open heart is like, I can teach, I can feed, you know, all of us a piece of fish today, or I can teach you to fish. Yeah. You know? 100%. And, and, and the, and it's funny. The fun thing is it's fun. And you yeah. go to like card shows and stuff like that and find rock cards or little things with like that are just dirty or yeah. a little bit. I, I don't know. I've just always been into it. So then I said to myself, while I was on that walk, I'm like, I am, I'm, I love that they want to teach that they all want me to do this. And I can make good money cleaning cards every day. Like people right. send me the craziest cards in the world. I, I look at some of the sold auction sites and I'm like, did that one, did that one, did that one, did that one? You know, it's like nice. it was yeah, a nice yeah. stuff in the world I have helped get into its grades. But I'm like, I'm going to teach people how to do this. I'm totally going to teach them. 
And that's when I made, I only, I've only been on Instagram guys for like a year and a yeah. month or a year and two yeah. months. Relatively new, right? I yeah. never wanted to use it, honestly. Right. I didn't want to do yeah. any of it. And then my wife was like, Kurt, you're a freak when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. People will. Passionate will, is what I'd like be, to say. Yeah. She, she, yeah tell, <laughs> I'm going to tell her that. I'm not, I'm not OCD. I'm not crazy. a freak. I'm passionate. Jesus. I'm yeah. passionate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I made the Instagram page. I didn't even know how to like load a video. I didn't know how to reply to people. Like, isn't that crazy? Gene says hearts on it. And I'm like, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing. And <laughs> I'm like, does this mean that I love this thing? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and You're so, trying you know, to figure it all out. Yeah. So, so I got this. There you go. my phone in it and That's just it. brought you guys into what the heck I do all the time. And nice, I made a couple man. videos. And sure enough, instantly people were like, dude, I've been cleaning cards for years and I, I don't have a toolbox. You know, I have a patchwork yeah. of a bunch of crap I use. And let me yeah, try yeah. it out. And then, like, my original customers were guys that were big dog, like, guys that clean cards for a living. Like, cement yeah, yeah. clean, cement clean. And that's all I needed was all those guys, as soon as they all started using it, saying, Kurt, just like you say, it doesn't fix everything. Right. All that stuff in between, dude, it kicks yeah. ass. And we get we can do more work with this type of stuff rather yeah. than, right. you know, stuff. And, dude, what a, what a freaking story, man. It's crazy. But it's insane. Brought me to today to talking to JD and Omar. Look at that, yeah. man. Dreams I, do okay. come true. Dreams <laughs> do come true. <laughs> and I, dream simple. Simple. I dream simple. Because this is fun for me. This is this is enough. You know, I, I, I love talking about sports cards and you know working on them. You know, the interesting thing is that w- when we got into this whole conversation, and this is if you guys want to go back and listen to the conversation that JD and I had about this was a couple episodes ago, JD, I think like maybe yeah. episode three or four, two, two or three, yeah. two or three, something like that. I've, I've always, because I I've been into cars since I was old enough to know what a car was. Yeah. So for me, very much like you, Kurt, right. The, the idea of cleaning um, and, and the idea of prepping a car to present well, or, or in, in the, in the auto industry to get a car retail ready. Right. Right. Uh, was it, it's always something that I don't really think, you know, is unethical, right? What's unethical is to take a salvaged car, title wash it, fix it, and then sell it as a good car that has not been rebuilt or rebranded. That's unethical. But there's nothing ethically incorrect about buying a car at an auction that has a clean title and a clean history, going and getting some PDR done, getting a cut and a buff and a polish and a wax on it, getting the interior nice and done and then putting it on the showroom and selling it to a customer or selling it or keeping it in the collection, whatever the case may be. And I've always approached this idea ever since that day that somebody sent me, and I have to, I wish I, I wish I remembered who sent me that video of yours originally, uh, because that's kind of what, what got me into it. Ever since I watched that video, the very first thing I thought about was, Oh man, this guy's doing no different than detailing a car. Uh, you and, know? And, and, and I'm, I'm glad you say that Omar, because like, and you, but you know, like, even though I'm kind of like, you know, so, sound like a little bit of internet oblivious and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not stupid. You know, yeah. I, I didn't, I did I knew that here's the thing. I knew it was going to be polarizing. You had yeah, an idea, right? I knew, but I, in my head, I knew that it was going to be probably 80, 20 or 90, right. 10, because right. there's no way that the greatest, like some of the best collectors around the country would reach out to me and send me a hundred thousand dollar packages. Yeah. If it was, if it was, if it wasn't legit unethical you know? or unethical because these guys are good guys too and they know the thing so that's omar why i did everything uncut raw mm-hmm. camera mm-hmm. Yep. you know i could have a highlight reel and all this before and the guys know me enough now where they accept i put up a before and after because i have right. 200 hours worth of other videos that support it you know what i mean yeah. but i thought it would be fishy because i mean the hobby craves transparency or demands uh, uh, it, you know? I totally agree, yeah. And it, and it's just like, and I'm cool with that too, because I I, I would say the only way people are going to, like, at least hear me out, I don't care agree or disagree, hear me right. out, Yeah, is if I can present them data before they make a call, make a decision. Mm. And you know, sometimes that's not even enough, man. Sometimes yeah, but, but then I, I at that point, out there, people will still, I'll still get like once a month or twice a month, somebody will write you some negative thing, like in your direct message. And I almost, I feel bad for that person. I'm like, what's yeah, that's all you can do. Write you something bad. Yeah. yeah. You know? Those are the best. Like, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. Like, I, tell, right. I tell JD all the time. J, J, JD, 
J JD it likes to jump in our comment section and start reading comments. And by by and large, they're all positive comments, right? People love people. Yeah, love, people, people like your show, it. you guys. I read people, people enjoy but, you guys. But then you'll get one or two, you know, of the the chooches that are out there that'll that'll write something silly or just something that's downright just mean and. And and yeah. and JD will message me. He'll be like, "Man, did you see that coming?" I go, "No, JD, I didn't. I, I, yeah. I I've yeah. I've learned to just. It's hey, not. Man. It's not that it bothers me. It's just like, it's sad, listen, isn't it? It. What bothers me is when you click on their name and they don't have their own goddamn content. Oh yeah. <laughs> listen, if you're gonna troll. Yeah, Give yeah. me something to yeah. troll and, back on. And you know, yeah. guys, and fellas, you know you're doing well when you got trolls. I mean, oh, only guys are the trolls. Agreed. And, and the thing is, I, I always wanted to be in like my utopia is I'm a nice guy, I'm transparent, I'm not a troublemaker or trouble starter. Right. We should right. all get along. But you know what? It's almost like my online community is almost how like I always got along in like in any workplace. Like yeah. almost everybody I have cool vibes with. You know, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. but I, I just think that in the only way, guys, I feel like I knew that this would be taken seriously if people knew who the dude was that was doing it. Because yeah. if I just named it like superstar sports cleaning or some crap like right, that, right. it's like this, it looks like Faceless. it's money driven. It's like yeah. somebody found a little wrinkle to try to make some money off all of us. Mm, so I'm yeah. like, collectors are smarter than that. So oh, agreed. I'm, so that's why I named it my freaking real name, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's why I answer every message on there. Cause I'm like, if I can just get even those that are interested to just check it out, then make a decision or try it out. Then make, it's like, don't write a review at a restaurant. You never freaking ate at people. Agreed. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, come on. Like, don't, but I, think, I, I think that goes a long way. Like you said, collectors, they're, they're, they're very intuitive. Yeah. Like, they, they'll sniff out fake. They, really quick, JD it's one and of the I. Great know common that. things we all have. It's like why, yeah. why we're all hunters. It's why we all hunt cards. We all know how to like. It's like it's it's in us when we yeah. all share that. You know. Yeah. Yep. Now that's, that's the, and I think like so kind of going back to a little bit of why we felt it was important to have you on. You know, I I think when Omar and I were first talking about the kit the the tool that he, you guys have mentioned a couple times now that that little edge yeah, thing yeah this one jd yeah yeah yep. so and no, no fault of his own because oh, he gets excited sometimes i get all jazzed but up when 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 i think when omar first described it it it, it came off as it was like a, a sharp edge type thing I, and i was like i was like dude that, that's 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 a little much that's no me. bueno yeah, yeah. um but now JD that I see it, it, yeah. Now that I see it, and I understand what you're talking about, it's genius. Yeah, thanks, like, JD. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's simple, like it's just simple, you know. It's yeah, but the I'm simple, not, simple I'm sells, not a super baby. Like, guy, that's like I mean, yeah, I, me I, either. I that's why. Like <laughs> All right, and that's the other thing too. Is it, it's so people? Can you show that again, both of you guys? <laughs> Look, guys, it's rounded, so you can't cut your finger off. Like, and it's 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 like <laughs> and and you're not gonna like anything with a corner on it you're gonna put that corner into a card and screw it up i've tried everything i've been i've been auditioning to own this business since i've been nine years old right, right. <laughs> and you know? i so i was thinking at first i'm like man some sharp object with me and my dumb ass like yeah. i'm gonna cut my finger off i'm gonna cut that's the right you did say that like, i remember I, now. I, I, no. I can't do that you See, know but the wipe down thing I'm all for it. I, I would cut my finger up too, JD. I'm not that slick. Yeah. So like, yeah. that's why I have to use rubber. Yeah. Tubing, yeah. You know? <laughs> Safety scissors. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah. It's like, yeah. I'm working. Cause like when we were talking about the automotive comparison, there's so many moving parts on an automobile. Yeah, right. There's parts upon parts upon parts. Cards, man. We're all going to square piece of paper. Right. That big, right. Yeah. Know? Piece of cardboard. So, so it's like, if it's got an edge dent, you're going to see it. If it's got a yeah. big corner, you know, it's like this stuff's good at getting a corner back in place, but if you got a big old crease, sorry, fellas, I ain't, gonna, be old, I ain't gonna be able to get a big crease out for you. You know, so that's it. That's so a now point. those, ahead, those, dude. yeah, just because I, I, I'm, I'm just learning here, and I'm gonna hop on your Instagram and, and investigate this a little further. Yeah, check it out. I, I really think it's interesting. So you take that tool and basically just kind of work the corner back. Is that like a lot of things? I do a lot of things with this. All right, so like, let's say. Um, so here, let me just, uh, I'll 
I'll give you a good verbal example. So like, since I'm so used to being in control that I'm on your sure. show now and I'm like, no, we have the camera. Uh, take, listen, <laughs> your, our show is your show, baby. All right. it's, so it's, here, it's, see, you know? that's, why, that's why I love the people in our community, right? You know, so we share, but so yeah. here's a couple things, JD, like you could have a card with your typical, here, I'm going to use a sticky note so all the viewers can see it. Okay. All right. So, cause it's probably easier to see than a card. So yeah. let's say that you have a card and it has one of those good old, you know, um, yeah, oh yeah. good old yep. corner lifts in it. Right. Yep. So with, a, with, in my mind, my hands want to grab this and yeah. shut it down. Right. But I also know that I'm not evenly distributing pressure with using my finger that way. Just like when you're working mm. on things and, things and vehicles, you got to have a, a, a consistent pressure to get anything out that came in. Yep. So, came like, in. yep. so like what I'll do is I'll with the tubing, since it spreads out the pressure evenly, I will go in there and go down each side, you know, go down the east to west, west to east, north to south, and just pull it back. So if I see a dent hit gotcha. the card this way, I want to gently unpack it, yeah. put it back into its stock position. Okay. I like it. You like detailed it. before. I, yeah. That, yeah. That when you, when you say unpacking, that's a detailing. Yeah. yeah. That was my, that was my height. That was my preteen through teens, you know, like, and I yeah. took great pride in that. Like I make stuff look sweet, you know, and like, uh, so then, then another cool thing, JD is like, if you have a, a paper card and you say you got a dent, like, you know, yeah. like, Montana, yeah, yeah, Montana, yeah. Montana rookie, Jerry, yeah. Right? Yeah. Cards with like that. So like what I'll do is if they have a dent and they're that thin era card, paper cards, you can flip that bad boy over and just massage the back of it and it'll push it front back into place. So you don't mm. have to stick to the corners and edges. You can go right in the center of a card and just even weight distribution, yeah. even weight, and just gently push that thing back into place. You can't dig out a factory divot or the sure. holes or things like that. It's like, I, I, no. I feel like uh, my stuff. Not, not every card can be saved, right? Kurt, no, I mean, there's no. some of them that are just too far gone. And I think that's a, that's a one big thing that we need to all be, you know, very, very, you know, deliberate about talking about here is that, once a card is gone, it's gone, baby. Right. I mean, there's, I mean, there's, look, if you want to start getting into the unethical side of things, then yeah, maybe you can bring some of those cards back. But right, as far yeah, as yeah. what you got going on in this kit, it's, this isn't a, this isn't a dead card reviver, right? No. I mean, this, is, this is something that you, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a step above, you know, wiping down with the microfiber cloth. And then there are some things that can be remedied on a, on a piece of cardboard, right? Right. Case in point, right? I think I wanted to. This is another thing I wanted to get into, Kurt. Is that I sent you two cards, right? That we worked on. Yeah, exactly. Yes, you did. So here is I'll I'll, I'll go over this one because this is our success story right here, Kurt. Well, I'm glad, to, and 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 when we get to that, I'm going to let you lead. But that was easy stuff that yeah I could teach anybody to do, and it was all in bounds. And look at it got that card to look exactly the way it should. So check this out. This card started off, I pack pulled this card. When I pack pulled it, it had, uh, I think it was a, 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 like, a, like a little divot on the, on the edge. Yep. And I think one, and it was just dirty on the front. It was just a dirty card. Yes. And on the back of that, it had three faint little marks, three faint little indents that did not uh, crack like, the surface, that did not crack the surface, but it was almost like a, I picture like some sort of rolling, like device. rolling yeah the, the, those the, the roller wheels right like you guys will see me call them print lines and sometimes yeah. they wipe off like magic and right. sometimes you can't even get them to do anything because they're right. like it just yep. it's either I, I feel like it's a piece of plastic laying on there like almost it, like it's almost like those one. like like polyurethane wheels that kind of push along the big yeah. mass yeah. machine yeah. Right yeah. Before right on top of it because mm -hmm. i've had people say to me like if you're if you can dig out a whole scratch and fill a whole, I'm like, when what video do you ever have me fill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. that smart. I can't figure that out. But like, right. I can get the crappy roller wheels off certain cards. So yeah, yeah. So sorry. So this Omar, one, yeah, this one, this one. No, no, no. This is yeah. This is good detail. It's what I want to talk about because this this card started off as a SG. Now SGC, by all accounts, in my opinion, is one of the one of the more accurate grading companies Legit. out there. They they originally like gave this an eight and a half, and I cracked it. I sent it over to Kurt. He worked his magic on it, or not worked his magic. I don't even want to call it magic. No, nah, just, just we, spent some time with it. We just spent some time with it, did some detailing, some cleaning, yep. some, uh, you know, just wiping down some of the surfaces and really did a good job on detailing this thing. I resubmitted it and came back a 9.5. And mm -hmm. this is all. You know, no nothing. This is this is not anything that Kurt has a special, you know, specialized skill in. It's right. just this kit.
that has the 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 equipment and the things that that you know that can take a card from an eight and a half to to a nine and a half in terms of making sure that it's clean and that it's presentable, it's wiped down properly. And uh, you know, this is this was a huge success for me. Who is I that? Mean, I, I, what player is that? This Ant Man, baby. Yeah. This Ant Man rookie, uh, blue blue explosion. I mean, I pack pulled this. This was great. I was so excited when I pulled it, but then, you know, I was excited to send it in. And obviously, I'm I'm not I'm not looking at it under a loop or anything, so I didn't really see anything too bad with it. But then, but Kurt, you saw something different, right? When you right. actually pulled it up, you actually saw all these imperfections and all these things that, yeah, made it an eight and a half. Uh, but luckily things that were able to be remedied. So right, because if it was an eight and a half because it had a four white corners, sorry, I don't have sorry, nothing we can do about that. But yeah. I could tell that from being factory to pack to sitting on the shelf or however it was, somebody pressed on it too hard. And there was mm. a and uh and it had a little a little valley in it. And all we had to do was just give it a little, just kind of just work that valley back down and it just the card went right back to it. Here's the thing when you can get to when it's a a minor blemish like that, the card has a lot of memory in it from being flat. So if same you as just, metal. You know, if you can just move it a little bit, the memory will kick back in and it will get right back into place. I, mm. But but sometimes, but if you're missing surface or foil or you're, right. it's, it's, yeah. don't, there's nothing don't, you can do about that. Don't waste two hours trying to flatten something out. That's, uh, but you know what? Use it as practice. I take that back. Practice. Uh, yeah. Work yeah. out. You know what I mean? Here's the other part of this. J Go ahead, JD. You had something. No, I was gonna. I was just gonna say, like, so now that we've we've, and I don't want to get too far ahead in the conversation, really, because this is like this is really interesting. We're we're on fire with uh, our guests, by the way. Oh, dude. Uh, but now that I'm thinking about this all over and hearing this, like from the guy, the um, the prices that are being paid to buy a pack of cards and the crap condition. That, that comes out of it. most of them are coming out of yeah you know you're not you're you're basically doing a little prep work to get your card back to at least at least to maybe the value been. of what yeah. the thing should have been in the first place right right so JD, that, that that's that's like it man i mean yeah and it's like this is like i i really now that i know what this is like i really am digging this because it's it, it like again, I understand that in manufacturing, and I'm that's not my background, but I do understand that there are flaws in any process, right? Right. So that's why you have car detailing, and that's why you have that, right? Because things over time deteriorate, and we want them to look nice and shiny and all that other happy horse crap. What you're doing and the way your brain worked and and put your knowledge to use for cards as a as a collector it's like you know it's almost like per it's like the perfect thing like yeah the perfect thing uh oh yeah i agree 100 percent. it's 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 really impressive man like I, i'm always envious of people that that can think like this because i can't <laughs> <laughs> like i can my brain does not work like this i i um I, and I, that's it's so nice of you to say jd i mean and... well i know it's it's I, and I, I, it's, it, it's nice, certainly, but it's the truth. Like my brother, it's funny. My brother would talk to you guys about cars. He owns his own detailing business. Yeah. So he oh, understands man, that side go. of, of yeah, the, yeah. his brain is that side, whatever that is left, right. I don't know. But my brain's the opposite side. Like yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> left, left brain. Right. I think right side is creative. Right uh, side creative. I think. Yeah. Mm. So it takes, it takes a village though, you know, I mean, everybody's yeah. got, we all this got is, this is the other card that I sent you, Kurt. The and, is that your PSA purchase? Uh, the, yes. The, so, yeah. okay, good. I'm glad because JD knows this card, right? Beautiful looking um, Jeter rookie. Correct. That had a horrible crease on the bottom. Now, you guys can't see it. I'll try to see if I can uh, if I can bring it up and post. But just a horrible, horrible crease on the bottom right-hand corner on the back. Or the bottom, uh, yeah, bottom right-hand corner on the back. And then there was a pretty good-sized divot, almost like... Um, like somebody dropped like a coin on it or something. It, it was, it's pretty bad. And so I sent this card along with the Ant-Man uh, over to Kurt. And I don't think I told you ahead of time about this card. I just sent it. I in. didn't know anything about it. Yeah. We didn't know anything about it. And immediately, as soon as he got the package and opened it up, he told me, Hey man, that Ant-Man, it's going to clean up nice. This Jeter, sorry to tell you, buddy, but it's a lost cause. I can't do anything with it. Best I can do is wipe it down and let's send it in and see what it does.
Right. Uh, it started off as a PSA four. It got an S uh, SGC three and a half. But I, I bring this up to 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 really illustrate this idea that right. there are some cards that just simply cannot have anything done to them. And That's, such good point, point. Omar. That's such a good point because I yeah. I don't want people to think that I'm like up to witchcraft over here. Yeah, exactly. You, it's not magic. No, right. exactly. That's no. my point, right? So, me, I'll tell you this, guys. Want to hear something cool too? Which I have full disclosure. So I always like making videos right so i had a handful of guys uh want to see some soccer videos today i cracked three soccer slabs today okay with my camera on mm. going after issues i couldn't make one video because i couldn't do anything to three of these cards yeah so, right oh i see what you're saying they were just so now i got three I got three raw cards here and a stack of broken things that i couldn't they look the same yeah, I, yeah. so if i made a video of that people would be like i didn't learn anything so i can right. simply tell you I don't. I don't hit a home run every time I pick one of these things. Oh, no, agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's that's my point. So I, I, I'm glad we. You know, I, I, I've been wanting to do that and wanting to kind of talk about that. But the other thing I want to talk about, um, uh, is is this kit. So th yeah. this kit is is online. Here's here's how it comes. It's a nice little little package that's got all your stuff in there. And I'd, I I want to walk through each one of these things kind of one by one, and then you can kind of just give us a, sure. an explanation on what. On what each one's for we already talked in depth about the yeah. tubing right so i think it's, this is it's if you simple. ask me this it's is awesome. kind of the workhorse right yes this, this the is, more this you is. work with your cards this will be your favorite thing the other ones are great because they'll, they'll give you instant gratification but it feels good to like yeah pick a dent, you know yeah this is this is the one this is the worker right here so there's yeah. there's this sheet in here T t tell me about this sheet it's like um it's almost like a, box, like a very, toolbox liner omar yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was just <laughs> yeah, man. yeah, toolbox lighter. That's but this is to lay right your on. card down on. Yeah. Yep. So look at I keep them all over. Here. I keep I keep them all over here. You know, I work on oh, cards. Because nice. okay. you know, how, like breakers can have like pretty mats. Like oh, yeah, logo. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would trash one of those. So I don't have a pretty mat. So that's why you guys see my basic system and my basic setup is because nice. I have the exact same setup that all my customers have, man. So like I Good work on these and fellows, if you ever need. Even if you don't, if you just want a good card mat to like work on stuff, this is toolbox liner. You can get it from Home Depot, Home Depot. or anywhere yeah. and you get it in a roll. I like it in six by six. So I just trim it down to six by six. As soon as nice. it gets dirty or whatever, throw it away and just get a new one. So hmm. I know what these are. These are, so this is just microfiber. This is in the kit also. Uh, yep. Microfiber. I use that to remove uh, the polish application. The polish. So, okay. I was yep. going to get to that in a second. So. Tell me about what this is. So that stuff, you guys, is my cleaning spray. And okay. what I do, what I, that was one of my first things I developed because I would, do you guys remember like when you get like 90s basketball card? Well, I'm talking about retro hoops. Jesus. Yeah, I better, yeah, baby. Come on now. better check what show I'm on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> please. Yeah. Uh, so, so like, you know, when you go out and you get those, um, like a garage sale find or a marketplace find, it would be 90s cards and they'd have all those little like spots and spots. Yep. All yeah, over yeah, all yeah, like, yeah. Spots. I would try, this is what freaked me out. This is when I first started grading stuff and I got like cool Jordan stuff and I got it in garage sales and marketplace. Well, it was before even marketplace, but anyway, mm. I uh, got microfiber out and I rubbed those things and it would just make the swirl scratches on the foil. And I'm uh, like, oh, yeah, like, you're toast. Screwed this up. So then I, um, was like I tried like naturally I just tried Windex and uh it would work on some cards right and then on other cards it would leave horrible white film and yeah I, was like, oh, I can't use this so sure enough man I just dip back into the you know creation station and I'm like all right I gotta I can't put any of this in it I don't want any pneumonia in this I don't no want ammonia yeah, yeah I gotta make my own stuff I just have to make my own stuff now and so then I started making that and like the 2008 9-ish and uh, that was like the first stuff I made because a lot of cards just need a wipe down just a front and right. back wipe down you know and you're good to go um and then I got started geeking out on it when I started getting great scores and stuff like that and that's when like a lot of the you know we'll get to the polish but that's when I started noticing those little lines on ref refractors and shiny yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like what could we do to get something to grip onto that dead plastic and like get it out of there you know and that's what led me to the next stuff but and then remember how many times it was like there would be people would do 
this was like one of my first big jobs I used to do with this stuff was when people would put fake autographs on cards. I don't oh, know if yeah. you guys had a bunch of scammers in your circle when you guys were kids, but people were like, yeah, I went to the Pistons game and Michael Jordan signed this for me. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> no, we didn't. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, uh, and so like there was things like in my little small little part of the world uh, before the internet and all that stuff was like, I had to deal with these knuckleheads. Yeah. And guys that like had some ink on cards. So I would have to go on there and remove it. And I, uh, I that, you know, it's like we used to, um, Mopar, since we were a Chrysler dealer, we had this stuff called yeah. Super Clean. It was a liquid, but it was like mainly like kerosene. So it's like a little too strong. It's like good mm -hmm. on a vehicle, but not, I put it on cards and it would leave that heavy weight. It would dry, it would suck all the moisture yeah, away. Yeah, I think, yeah. So, but that was the concept I was going for. And I was able to, you know, develop this and get like, that so this crap. is just like a like a final wipe down, right? As soon as you like, is this uh like after everything no, else? It can be a standalone, man. It can oh, be a standalone. Gotcha. Like um, so like if you got that, so if that say that Jeter card that you had that was all bent up. Yeah, you're not going to put any sort of polish on that card because there's right. not a shiny surface to polish. It's just, there's not a chrome. There's yeah. no. It makes no sense. You know, yeah. you just get it wet and it would just screw up your card. So like, no polish. But if you had, let's say you had. A nacho streak on there or a piece of mm. dirt that we got in the top loader or something gross from years ago you get out this you spray it on your cotton wipe 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 up down up down left right left right put the card down let it sit if it's clean you're done if you still gotcha. reduce that stain let go do a quick other session to remove it and then the card will be back looking factory fresh nice huh. interesting okay Good for next thing perfect stuff these are all just regular old Cotton swabs, right? These are just CV, uh, CVS, Walgreens, there cotton go. swabs. Yep, yeah, they're my, make, makeup removers. Yeah, and, my wife's got a tube of those in the bathroom. I and exactly viewers get 100% cotton, okay? They all look alike, but get the 100% cotton. The ones with the plastic and the fillers in them can scratch a card. So cotton, 100% cotton, cotton. plastic. Got it. All right. No, 100% cotton. Yeah, 100% cotton, not 100%, cotton, man, 100 plastic. No plastic. Omar, don't, don't you be buying those 100% plastic ones. You're going to be ruined. No, no, no. no, no. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Why are my cards all ruined? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that guy gave me some bad advice. <laughs> all right, so tell me what the difference is between this microfiber and then this, this sheet right here. Perfect. So after you guys, like, these kind of go together. Um, hold on. Let me let me reach down here, Omar. I got I got my my trash from working on cards today. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good reminder, though. Always throw this stuff away when you're done using it. Oh, so okay. You use this this cool little applicator, which is an automotive detail swab. Surprise! Yeah, exactly. Surprise. Yeah. Um, so this is like for cleaning around radios and vents and stuff. Getting like into that. the tight trim. spots. So you use this to go into the to the polish so you can apply it evenly and it then right and then to remove it i like to use a microfiber i don't like to remove it with cotton or anything like that i just like to, it. i just like to remove it with microfiber and then um once these are toast they'll last you a couple sessions but i want you guys if you're touching these and you feel any sort of any sort of resistance or any sort of crunch throw the damn thing away these are like, it'll scratch they're like they're like a dollar you know what i yeah. mean yeah yeah, you're probably working on a card that's like a thousand dollars. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> don't don't do this. You know, pitch it. You know. So I I started basically my my thought process behind it. Omar was I'm gonna put a handful of like the spray, the polish, the tool. Two of the three are gonna last you probably 150 cards. The 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 tool will last you forever if you don't break it. Right. But these other stuff. I just want to throw in some starter stuff that I use that I've always worked. Gotcha. With successful for me so you will have to buy more the more yeah yeah those are all those are all consumables yeah good stuff man and then the polish that stuff just... that stuff's fun to use and it's easy to use it's like i noticed that even like if you guys like had a certain year that you went heavy on um like let's say prism or mm -hmm. who didn't who doesn't have a year they went heavy on prism or something you know what i mean all right so, like yeah. check this out you guys even if You've sleeved them all and put them away for four years. Right. You take two of them out, polish one, and leave the other one there. Big it's difference, almost huh? like it's like polishing your silverware before Thanksgiving. That oh, wow. it's crazy. Bowman cards, all those cards will will start to slowly just dull down after a few years. 
And I'm sure that the clear coat on top of it is cheap, the cheapest plastic. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the we coating. Treat, these treat, we treat these cards like like gold, and they're made with the cheapest products in the world. <laughs> yeah. Like, the guys don't even have to wear the damn jersey anymore. You know? right. <laughs> like Christ, you know. So yeah. it's like I'm like so I, I, I think if you're not going to even make the dude wear the shirt ever anymore, you right. ain't going to buy some premium plastic to put on top. Right. Of it, exactly. You know? Yeah. So it's like take them out, give the front and back a good polish, and it will make the cards scream. It will make them really shiny again. And that stuff, the polish too, guys, will give you a good grip if you have any of those plastic remnants laying across the top. If they're dug into the card, I ain't gonna be able to help you. But the right. yeah. top, you can get it off easily with that. So what's what's the whole kit cost? Fifty bucks. Mm, that's not bad. Everything that's in here. And, and I would say too, JD, like, it's like, I, I love talking shop and doing stuff like that. Like you guys don't see any videos of me ever doing some like cheesy hard sale, but like logistically, man, like if you can't profit off buying my card kit, like you're totally like doing it wrong. Like yeah, you right. watched one of my videos, you haven't want, asked a question. You must be getting cards that are just like shredded and expect them to come back together. But like, right. Right. It's very, and, and the thing is I support no matter what people do in cards. I feel like there was a lot of like, when I started getting more involved in this, I feel like there was like a lot of like little clicks of like, yeah. we believe this, we believe that right. people that do this with cards suck. People that keep them forever are the right. I was almost like, why do people overthink the shit out of all this stuff? You know exactly. I mean? So yeah. I'm like, so if people buy cards and look at them every day, I love you. If yeah. people buy cards and try to get them to score the highest and sell them as fast as they can, love you go get it yeah yeah you know yeah. if you just like to look at your friends cards and talk to them about them love it Be, yep. welcome to the hobby you know yeah. I, it's, it's, it, that's why i was always like uh i just never want to be you know i support anybody that's involved in this because i think we have a lot more in common than we don't agree and, and i agree with that statement and i'm glad you said it because i think that's a lot of how omar and i operate uh you know i i, I have to like sell cards to buy other cards that i want right yeah. but it's also fun to do a little bit of speculation right you get a little bit of that gambling aspect going on yeah. or whatnot or like you really believe in a player or, and and you know that's kind of like your thing and 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 then i have my guys that i buy and i don't do anything with i keep them no matter what uh, yeah exactly but they're, they're, I, they're that whole thing like that segment of you know, oh, you got to use this guy, or you got a grade here, and this and that. It's like, listen, do what you want. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm a total, I'm a total grading whore. I go, I go wherever, I go everywhere. I don't it's, even care. It's fun. Like, yeah. I, I think that even like, you know, like we call it the hobby, but it's like it can be on like Las Vegas for a lot of us. It could be on twenty four seven. You know, and the thing yeah. is, even if it is your full time job. There's no way you got into this as your full time job unless you freaking love it. Really love it. Yeah. Right. This is not something you fall into. And even no. if it's just your hobby, like I'm talking to guys that collect, you know, a little bit to a lot, you know. And I just think that, like me personally, I've always found it satisfying to sit down with my collection, read the back of them, look them up. I find when I'm sitting at my desk, I'll look up some comps and look when I bought it. And it's just for me, I just thought to myself, if I enjoy this, maybe there's some other guys that will dig this too. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been it's been speaking way of, more awesome than anything else. Speaking of comps, JD, we got to get my man set up with a. Yeah, with we got to get you involved with the old card hedge. With the sure. card hedge, we got to get you. We got you get, get you set up with a card hedge uh, account so you can go in there and check your comps, man, and fill me in. I'll do, do all that good mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, all right, let's uh, let's switch it up for a second, Omar. Right, go ahead, JD. Let's talk music. Let's do just it for just for a little bit, man. Just I'm, because I'm, I'm it's, it. it's you know. Cars is great. How do you all, not but... talk music with a guy who right. has a room like that? So <laughs> I, I see the guitars in the background. And prior to coming on, uh, you know, my first thing I, I I always throw out my favorite bands right off the bat. What's what's your flavor? Who's who's your band? Oh God, that's such a tough one. It's almost like who's your favorite kid? I'll say like my influence <laughs> is the ones that hit me the hardest throughout the years. Oh God, it would be. It kind of all traces back to the Beatles um, okay. because of my father. 
Um, yep. He had really good taste in music. And my dad did a good job explaining to me that there was nothing before the Beatles. It was like right. Dorothy landing in Oz. Yeah. It was yeah. like jazz. And that then was the explosion. Beatles show up. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. A lot so, of people don't understand that about the Beatles. Well, it's because, you know what I mean? It's like, and like even guys, like when we like turn into the old guys now, and we're like, yeah. I used to buy these Brady's for $50 a piece. It's like, yeah. it's part of, it's part of us. You can't help yeah. it. You know Agreed. what I mean? And it's like, we lose track of time. Like we know how special that was, but right. we're talking to a 21 year old collector and they're like, all right, whatever, you know, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so like musically, I think that the Beatles, what were, what started it. Cause I grew up in a small country town. We didn't okay. even have TV like cable until I was in like 18 years old and I moved right. out. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I grew up listening to records. So I had 45s, okay. 33s. Like I had records. And so I'd listen to anything between, I, and being right out of Metro Detroit, my mom loved Motown. So we would okay. listen to Marvin nice. Gaye. We listened yeah. to Aretha Franklin, um, the Rolling Stones. Um, David Bowie and the Talking Heads were very heavy play at my yeah. house. Um, and my dad was good at storytelling and telling you about like, the band is queen, but wait till you know what, wait, wait till some of these things these guys have done to like get to, you know, he was a good, or he was good at talking music. So like, I just fell in love with like people that could play instruments. So now it's sure. like anybody that does country, anybody that does yeah. rock alternative, if you're a good musician and just, you got chops, like I'm in, like I can pay attention. Yeah. To, you sure. know? That's but then man, my, I, my band growing up, so like my cousins and stuff like that are older than me. And I'm the oldest of my me and my brother. So growing up in a small town, you kind of hang with your family a lot. And they were all like class of like 90, 1991 to like 95. Okay. And so my cousin Jody, every time we'd hang out, like most weekends, I'd go to her house and she'd give me tapes. So like when I started like homework. Get, yeah, yeah. So it was like I was like how information was shared, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know? So like I would have my records at home, but I'd go to Jody's house and she'd give me the tape of nirvana bleach and she'd, oh, give, me yeah, the, yeah. she'd give me the ta ta tape of jane's addiction yep. you know and she'd give me the tape of um like temple of the dog you know uh, and, and i'd go home and play the dude music. And such I, a good album man oh, hunger man. strike hunger strike is my favorite song hands it's down just, i'm just a huge fan of like how people can just make noises for three and a half minutes and it almost is like a movie for a lifetime yeah, yeah. yep you know yeah like i could just li and like like i said uh jd that right there that's the uh audio slaves first album and yep. cornell wrote on it thanks for the support kurt love chris cornell and wow. so i got to my my dear friend and i when we worked at the radio station together um in detroit we worked for a great station called the riff 40 year old rock station you know it's kick-ass if it's called the riff the Definitely riff, right? Yeah, better right. Can you have for a rock station than the riff? And so, like, I was fortunate to work there and met great people. And uh, we met Chris Cornell and Tom Morello uh, the first night of yep. the, they opened the Audio Slave tour in Detroit, and we were there to interview them. And wow. we got to watch their entire sound check. And we were the only people in the place. We were right there, and they did a forty-five-minute sound check. And it's freaking Rage Against the Machine with Chris yeah, Cornell. Yeah, yeah, you know? wow. just kind of like, yeah. Whoa! I'm like. Yep. And it just felt magic. Like I could, awesome. it, it was this magic. And I never like to ask these guys for their autographs because, like, I was in radio. It was like kind of like, I just, yeah, you trying to play it cool. When Chris was done and they were just hanging, I said, "Chris, man, like, I buy Gretsch guitars because you had one on the front of Guitar World. Uh, can I have a as a fan? Can I have your autograph? He's Kurt, give me the damn thing. He's, of course, you got a picture with me. Yeah. And I was like, Chris Cornell's the man, you know? Yeah, so, that's awesome. Dude. Yeah. And then, and then, like, but then I'd get the Nirvana Bleach album and love the hell out of it and then i'd listen to appetite destruction for five yep. listens in a row yeah. yeah and then i'd listen to prince and then yeah. i loved i love too short oh know? like i love dr dre i love now, now, now we're at now we're in my arena kurt like, now you're I in my listen, arena i could listen to too short every album of too short yep. front to back like yeah all, guy, all, all 600 of them right i mean that guy, yeah. like he he spits it how it is. And it was yep. crazy because I'm a white dude that lives in a country town in Pinky, yeah, Michigan. Middle of Detroit. And I listened to him and I felt like he was talking to me. He was, yeah. like, you know what I mean? That's so, crazy. Like crazy stuff, man. So That's like, crazy. I just kind of, I use all that stuff as inspiration of like, 
all right, I'm not going to ever be a great probably rock star, a great rapper, or I'm, I'm probably not going to get out and play all these sports with these guys that I collect. But I can be a pro at something I like and something yeah. I'm good at. You know, yeah. so I, I have to be inspired all the time. So music, as you see, I'm surrounded in it because it's yeah. like it always reminds me. Yeah, no, music, music's awesome. That's great, man. That's what about that's... you, JD? Is that like hitting on some of your stuff too? Yeah, I mean, like, so for me, I, I go like you know from Wu Tang to Tupac to Biggie, uh, like '90s hip hop, New York stuff, you I know, and it. then uh, big, big, big Pearl Jam, Rage, Metallica, amazing, uh, Tool. I've seen Tool three four times now in concert like it they, they I just could listen to opiate from start to finish oh, over dude, and over uh, yeah and over. yeah <laughs> it, it's like like 46 and two every time i hear that oh, bang, 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 you know like it's just like it's like i get like it's game time baby like and let's I, go and yeah. i and i and i can almost and it's like when i hear that i think about the layers not only can they play that but the yeah. fact that they sat down and recorded this on yep. these layers like yeah <laughs> crap coming in yep. and it's like making it's one thing but then composing it and putting it together it's so it's yeah. art it's like yep. and i and you know like i did a job for many years that stressed me out and you know tested me but i would try to find the art in everything i do like everything i do that's like, awesome man i just like if i can't your brain my brain at least is like my yeah. brain, i love it and it's my biggest worst enemy so it's like even like you guys see like my company logo here and on my shirt you know i wear this like every day to remind myself to kick ass for my customers every day. Yeah. 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 Every day. I'm never Good off. Stuff. I have to do this, you know, and it's just like, but a lot of it I learned from being inspired by the greatest athletes in the world and the greatest musicians yep. in the world. Cause that's yeah. the people that I looked up to. I couldn't tell you a, a damn thing about policy or politics or the law. Or, yeah. Yeah. I'm not a fan. I don't know. But yeah. when it comes to this, neither could we. <laughs> I just I, I just excuse myself from types of conversations that I'm just lost in, you know. I, I I always say like if I could get paid for the amount of useless information I have in my brain, yeah. dude, I'd be yeah. I'd be yeah. I'd be million hanging million. out in Florida on my yacht, like fishing all day. Oh and, my god, call me. You know, call. You know, <laughs> That's but, awesome, dude. Yeah, I'll nobody like nobody wants to know who who like led the league in batting in like '93 or you know what I mean. Like, I know, so. it, and it's like, and I can and I can tell you all the drummers to all the bands that were replaced yeah. and when yeah. they wrote the song and where they wrote it, you know. Yeah. But like that, that so but like then I'd say Nirvana was probably the 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 band that took me into the next era, and like uh, I picked up a card this year, you guys. Like since I like, I love music, obviously, and I love cards. I got the the um. I think it's a, the Leaf, the Leaf Executive Cut, where they're cut autographs. Oh, I, got, okay. I got the Kurt Cobain 101. Oh wow! Ooh, and so I wow. got the autographed Kurt Cobain card, and it's off of a dirty beer coaster. That that's got to be wow. pretty damn rare. Oh god! Like, you know, and you touch it, and it just has that. It's haunting. It's like yeah, yeah. Kurt, it's almost Kurt was at this bar gigging. He didn't like signing autographs because he thought it was cheesy for anybody yeah. to like want. He he yeah. was like, "Here's the song." appreciate my song don't touch me you know, yeah. like, even like when kurt cobain wrote rape me all these people were like whoa they, they'll stop looking yeah. any further let's just make you think it's a bad thing yeah he's talking about how people find something they want and want to rip it all apart and yeah. squeeze all the money out of it and yeah. just be done with you and he just came out there and yeah. said it and yep. you know but yeah yep. people never listened to the song said he was oh he was writing about dirty stuff no yeah 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 yeah, yeah. No, no not at all think. peel back the curtain people look yeah 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 you know? <laughs> Take take Good a few stuff, minutes man. to really to really get into it and understand yeah. it before we try to use your it. own brain rather than relaying some patchwork of information you read somewhere else. You know, yeah. Good stuff. Man. No, that's good, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you for coming Dude, on, man. This was this what was a fun show. You guys, you guys are awesome. <laughs> thanks. Hey, thanks, man. You know, we try. We try. We don't try very hard, but we try. You know, yeah, like, not, dude. I, I I'm totally yeah, happy. This, this is this is definitely a no try zone. Out here, you know, yeah, you know. one of those things where I just think about this, guys. From all of us being close in age and growing up as collectors, right? Yeah, there was never any way to like connect like this and hang out. No way, no other places around the world, and they're collecting no. and like you know, so cool. It's funny you say that because, and I, JD, I don't think I've told you this, but I think I told somebody this, and I, I it might have just been somebody in, in one of my personal friends here or in person or something. But I said, just think about this. I said, white guy from Boston. Mexican kid from Houston, Texas. Never in a million years would our paths have crossed, ever. Yet, nope. because of cardboard, uh, cardboard pieces of cardboard with grown men on them, 
crazy. Here we are, me and my boy doing this doing yep. this podcast. I've yep. known him for over, what what a couple years it's now, been, JD. It's been two years now at least. You know what I mean? Started I off like... with a couple of Facebook messages and yep. stuff, and here we are. Yeah, and then, then now here, and then Kurt, now here so he messaged me one day, and he's like, "Listen, man, I really admire you." And I was like, "Thank you." And then from there, it was just he took me know, under his wing, and, and here we are. You. Bring me in, <laughs> throw me a bone, JD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please, yeah. oh, great one. Please. I, I'm, easy, I'm easily amused man like i have a mantra like yes yeah, when i started when i wrote three things on my wall that i try to run everything through relax have fun and love life and if i can't do nice. that you know i lost my dad at 60 he died at 65 years old lost my father-in-law and mother-in-law in the last year who me and my wife have been together since we were kids i've known yeah. them for 20 years both my in-laws passed away in their early 60s and i'm just like it was just it just hit me and i'm like yeah. i gotta hunt every day to go do something that i enjoy doing and connecting with people and like stuff like this is fantastic man I love and you know what sure. you know what else is interesting somehow right through going back to the pieces of cardboard with grown men on them and all this stuff people with very similar stories and whatnot seem to continue to link up like yeah your story Right, like you've been with your wife for a long. Same with me, right? I've been with same my here. wife since high school. Same with Omar, yeah. like wild, same age, like kind of like similar music taste. This, that. It's a very interesting how, like, you know, the it's world works. Parallel. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. My dad and, and it hope, all comes in circles, man. It all comes at in some circles. point. Like, get you know, get everybody together. Uh, maybe we'll do a big card hedge company. Uh, Oof. you know, get together and, and like don't threaten me with a good time, JD. Yeah. Well, like we'll get Pitbull on stage. And I'm gonna just, pick out know, the music. I'm I'm in charge. Yeah. I'm the I'm in charge of the playlist. All right. Yeah, you gotta yeah. you gotta know a couple yeah. people. Maybe we can get somebody cool there. You know. <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. Tell you what, my co- I, I you know, and this is just as fun because I'm a fan of people. I have a bunch of famous customers that are like people you would never guess that are collectors. Really, really? that's cool. And they're yeah, and don't they're, tell, and, don't tell. No, tell. It's yeah. because gets because you know what? It we're collecting. We're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. right. Like, yeah. Like you, you okay. know them in a different lens. It's a and different it's bubble that you because you I don't have the pressure to have to ask them like how yeah. is this going? Or yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. watch TV, so I suck with actors. I suck with like if it's a band I like, I like it. But if it was a musician that I didn't care for, I wouldn't want to have to feel like oh yeah, I really like your new hit. Like we don't have yeah, to yeah. talk about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're talking about, we're talking cards. We're talking, we're about, talking cards. We're talking about fixing an RPA, and it's so yeah. funny that you know you yeah. get to meet dope. people yeah. that you would never really meet if it wasn't for collecting cards. You know. Yeah, it's it's interesting, you know. It's for sure, like, it's good stuff. Good stuff, man. Dude, I'll tell you what, I was tired coming on here tonight, and now I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> now I'm ready to listen to some Pantera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go, Cowboys <laughs> from Hell, baby. Let's go. Let's do some Boulder, JD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, JD, I really think you you hit it on the nail. We we've we've killed it back to back with the with these uh, with these guests, man. We had a great guest on yesterday that got yep super nerdy with the analytics and me and jd were just sitting back eating it all up man and yeah we did I mean, not, and now, now today dude, we have we have you on with with all your energy and and just your positive energy and i i knew i i i knew this was going to be a good episode but man dude you 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 way over delivered dude i appreciate I hope, it I hope, I hope the guys watching enjoyed it you know that's what we're doing yeah. this for i hope we could entertain some people for a little bit and let them in that's- our world for a little bit that is the main reason that's the main reason me and jd decided to do this is to Mm -hmm. entertain people and hopefully you know get them get them out of their box for for an hour you know what i mean it's it's not about it's not about being right or wrong or where i'm i'm not an expert and i'm never going to claim to be on my own channel channel when i make my videos it's my opinion if you agree with it great if you don't great like but it's it's entertainment right like we're all old we're we're with wives and kids and yep. sports and bills and this and that and it's like the way like you said before man about like you don't really get out often or when you do it's you know it's you're trying to do things you enjoy and through the pandemic one of the beauties of it has been this rebirth of the card industry with people our age yeah that now yeah. have some some various life experience yeah and, and it's like that. It's like that Ahmed song or whatever. There back in the day when I was yeah, yeah, yeah. rocking that song for like yeah, yeah. two straight weeks now. But it's yeah, true. we forgot. We forgot you know? how awesome it was. We forgot. We yeah. forgot what it felt like to collect and to and to you know be you know enamored with these cards with these athletes on them that 
you know, bring us, you know, to or even even current athletes, right? I mean, I'm a big John ja Morant fan, and watching this guy yeah. run around, Dude. it's incredible. I, I like, I love like this new crop of kids who are like just fearless and just, I mean, they're they're going for it, and you know, th- that's how the that's how the guys were, you know, when we were growing up. You know, the Kim Elijah ones, the Sean, oh, Kim, the Kenny Hardaways, the the you know the the Gary Bad Payton. Boys from Detroit. Exactly, dude. Exactly. The yeah, the the oh man, that's that was that I still work, I man. still hate Isaiah Thomas, by the way. I got you know how hard it was for me to ever like, like yeah, that's, Michael. I Jordan can imagine how tough that was. Or or like Kobe Bryant. Like oh. I looked at those guys as enemies, right? Yeah, well, baby enemies. I I get yeah. it. I yeah. get it, but you know, but then now that it's all over, the playing days are over. I watched the Redeem team yesterday and it like yeah, what a great and, show, right? I still haven't watched that. Talk. Like uh, uh, JD, I'm sorry, man. Hey, I, you yeah, know what? Retro retro hoops. I yes, know, what? dude. I know. Not retro Boo. enough. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cho- it's touching. It's full of leadership. It's full yeah, of seriously. Money. It's full That's of one thing Kobe was. It's it t- Kobe well, knew how to stop and on. smell the roses every day. Yeah. And that was one of the biggest things I admire about him. people would say, you know, he's a ball buster, he's strict or whatever. That's just his personality. Some people are yeah. just, he's just, that's his personality. But I feel that that dude appreciated every day. Yeah. Yep. He, sure. And it's like, and I just, uh, you know, I just can't. And he I grew. Do the hobby because it's fun, right? He so grew like, over time. Yes. Right? Definitely. And did. his, you know, when sorry, Omar, because at this point, man, there's no really excuse for you not to have seen this. So I, there really is it. So really like isn't. when he when it talks about his career growth, and you know, he was kind of viewed one way, and then he needed that team as much as that team Absolutely. needed him. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then like when he that scene where they talk about they go out and they play uh was it Spain? Spain and, Paul, uh, and Paul, Paul Gasol, Gasol, and he's, like, out. he's like I'm, I'm I'm running through that, and and I was like, and yeah, yeah. Carmelo was like, what? What? And he goes out, <laughs> just watch, but, boom! And it was the best, and it was the best because Gasol is like saying, "Oh, Mari goes, Kobe came to my room, he hung yeah. out. I think yeah. he did that to soften us up, you know." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then he, he runs like, right through his head. And Kobe called it. He told all starting five. He goes, "I'm running through him. Yeah. He's going to do a high pick, and I'm going to plow through him." Yeah, and uh, they were like, "That's your homeboy." He goes. Not, not, not right now. now. Yeah, so then they edit it where he gets plowed, yeah. and LeBron goes. After that, there's no way we're gonna be losing to yeah. MF Greece or whatever. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. that that just that that just showed you all it takes is one thing yep. to yeah. get to the to catalyst. You know, yeah, the catalyst. You know, and I think you guys like us guys, all the forty-ish crew, or even the guys thirty-five to fifty right now that are back into collecting or never left. You guys, we play a big role for the yeah. next generation. Agreed, because, 100%. Because yeah. I rarely, all my card stuff has really become a patchwork of smart guys that I've connected with. Mm. I've never really, I wouldn't know how to get the answers to this stuff if it wasn't for stories or storytellers yeah. or people. Yeah. Like, I would just have a piece of cardboard with a few letters, a few words on the back. Yeah. So, like, I think you guys, like, I'll tell you what, I do FaceTimes or video calls with any one of my customers that need help. I'm like, my job is to make you awesome at this. So like, uh, you need me, you hit me up. Last three video calls were with guys that were under 15 years old. Wow. (laughs) That's fantastic. They're the ones ones that wanted my advice. So a guy, I got on the phone, I got on the video the other day and I said, I was waiting to know if his dad was going to join or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know if it was. And, and I, and and how, I, how do you, how do you not? I mean, how do you not do that, right? I mean, like, how do you right. not? You're almost a, you're almost a steward of that information, right? right? And and to not pass that down would be, uh, killing the very hobby itself. It was right? so touching to because I used to go to the local card shop, man. Like like in the '90s, those they were popping everywhere. You guys in your respective areas, they yep. were more popular yeah. than my area. Yep. So like we'd go there and geek out, you know, and the vendors told us this and this and this and this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that became part of the lore and came part of the story. And I think if we didn't have like us passing it down, well, that's why guys in our age generation, I don't care how old you are, be kick-ass and cool to everybody and the younger crowd. Oh, for because sure. Because you know, guys like us still know 50s and 60s and 70s basketball and baseball and football. Like if you got in the hobby right now, that stuff might seem out of reach or not even, you don't even care about it. 
but like right. we can pass that torch down to these young guys where that stuff's going to stay relevant and it's going to be part of their vernacular you know so i think that that's yep. a really big and important piece and, and, and as equally important to that is also what you said support your local card shop go if you have one in your area go to it go. buy from it yeah talk to the guy become friends with them like that stuff man is is again it it's so important to the to the lifeline yeah of, of this this hobby that i through the, through covid in my area there were no the the one hobby shop we had closed down a couple years ago there was nothing since covid there's like five six wow, yeah. In, in, yeah. In, in the 20 minute drive for me which is phenomenal that's and awesome these guys man. are yeah they're and they're awesome dudes they're they're reasonable but you gotta support them <laughs> If you yeah. don't support them, they're going to close up it's the shop. Can, can you believe that in the Houston metro area, for as large as a metropolis as we are, we're a pretty big city. Oh, it takes you huge. takes you an hour to drive across the city of Houston. Um, we have two. It's I know. It's it's wild, isn't it? That's wow. it, dude. And hey, both wow. of them are on the south side of town. So if I want to go to an LCS, like my LCS is an hour away from me. Yeah, that's. Can you believe a, that? There's a few here around Metro well, Detroit. I can now that you told me. And uh, a few of them are popping up, you know. And it's like I think it's important to go support these guys because even from a, just look at it from a business perspective, it's grown guys that have lives and bills yep. to pay, families. You and, know, yeah. these guys probably don't own the building, so they're probably fifteen hundred right. to two thousand yeah. dollars a month before they make yep. a dollar. And then yep. internet. And I'm sure, like, if you're buying, if you're a guy that buys cases of product, I'm sure you ain't getting that big of a discount. You know what I mean? Right. It's probably a little bit. So it's almost like a respect thing to because like I've talked to some guys that own some LCSs and they're like, we understand that, you know, you can check comps right from your phone. And there's sometimes we can't be 20 percent less. We can be coming a little bit lower. And I'm just like, if people can just also think big picture for a few seconds when they go into these yeah. little card shops, yeah. of like you might pay five dollars more for this card or ten dollars more for a pack that will could be delivered to your house in five days on the Internet. But like. I'm not asking there's no community in that delivery, but if you like that experience. Yeah, you're not just right. going into a card shop to buy a pack of cards. You're paying for that experience too. So like yeah, help these right. guys out. A lot of these yep. guys put their entire financial life on the line to be able to provide a service like this. So like go yeah. hook a brother up, you know, yeah, but I think, I think that's a good point. What you just said right there, Kurt, is that you're not just going there to buy a card, right? You're right. going there, you're paying for a service. For yeah. You can go, you can go on right. eBay for that. You're going yeah. to LCS for the experience. You're going to the LCS for the, for the people, the community, yes. the, you know, the connection with your community. And, and it's, yeah, it's important to, 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 you know, to support that because yep. ultimately that's the lifeline, right? I'm coming to, to the Houston or the, um, the Houston. Dallas car show, Dallas car show, Houston, Dallas, whatever. It's all Texas, yeah. right? You know, it's like, well, hold on now. Easy. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But you like, tell a guy, you tell a guy from Houston that Houston and Dallas are the exact same thing. Oh, yeah. man. It's like it's that's like that's like Michigan and Michigan State here in Michigan. Uh, it's like, wait a minute. Yeah, easy now. Yeah, you know, like I'm really coming down to my main motivation to come to Dallas Card Show was to go and give hugs to all the vendors there that recommend me and buy stuff. Oh, that's from me. awesome. Because I'm not even I'm not, I don't even have a booth, man. I can't bring a bunch of kits there and try to uh, get listen, man. It, it, you know, too much. You yeah, know? but I'm coming to say what's up to my homies and hang out with everybody and be like, you guys want to go out to dinner tonight? Can it yeah, me, you know, like just, I just I'll definitely, go, oh, I'll definitely be there. there. I'll definitely be there Friday. So I'm gonna probably be there gonna, too. Probably gonna drive up. I'll probably drive up Friday. It's about three or four hour drive for me, but I'll probably drive up Friday. I'll be there Friday. I'll stay the night, and then uh, probably hit up Saturday for a couple hours again, and then head on back. But um, I can't wait, man. I can't wait to yeah. see you. We'll we'll see. We'll yeah. yeah be great. I think SGC is gonna be back down there again. All the guys from SGC. Hopefully, I'll get to see them again. But. Kurt, man, I can't thank you enough, man. This is this has been awesome, dude. Uh, we, good, we, guys. we could we could sit here and chat for another five hours, man, just talking. Yeah. All hey, back. I, yep. hey, I, anytime you guys ever need anything with with you know that falls under my umbrella, I would be happy to chat with you and talk with you guys anytime. I we'll, I'm, we'll I'm plug you into my, the Rolodex for I'm sure. I'm pushing yeah. myself more to be a little bit more involved in that. Just you should, man. I was gonna face, tell you my hands and <laughs> card clean you, card. You, you really should, man. I, I think you have a great personality. You have a great oh, vibe. Right. You obviously Absolutely. have a background in radio. So, you know, talking is not an issue for you. Uh, I, I really I really think you need to get out there more, man. And people need to see you. People need to hear more about your story, your background, 
this this great mix that you have of 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 a badass and a and a and a hippie basically yeah, that that came together and created created this That's this sweet. unique person that you are man and I think you Thank need you. to get out there more because I think people will really not only enjoy you know your thoughts on 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 the way that you think but also you know, uh, really buy into your story because people, I mean, I can, I can go down to CVS and buy everything that's in this kit. Yes. But you best believe that if I ever need more of those, uh, those squeegees, I'm, I'm hitting you up. Yeah, you know, so th those are the kinds of things that, that I think would really benefit you, man. And I think you, I think you're doing everybody. I think you're doing the hobby a disservice by, by, uh, by just showing us your hands, man. I really right, do. I'm going to go out more, man. There you, you know, go. I'm, I'm going to, yeah. I, I, I was, I was, uh, you know, I, I've, I've definitely become a little bit a homebody, but like yeah. invitations like this, Omar, like you can JD, like asking me, like, it just makes me feel good. And I'm like, all right, you know, let's, let's, let's do this, you know, cause let's open up a little bit. And that's and, and there's so much, there's so much negativity that gets spread. Yeah. I know. Isn't that weird? Someone like yourself, man. Like, again, I, I already, I, I, an hour and 19 minutes ago, I wasn't feeling too well. I'm feeling good about myself right now. I got my Hulk Inter Inter T shirt on. I, I, I like I'm a, it, I am a real American. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, like that's it, JD. Stay positive and love you your know, life. Like, and 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 Omar, you were too young for Hulkamania. That sucks. I uh <laughs> it was dude, it was chilling to watch Kevin Kevin Nash was my Hulk. He was awesome too. The, 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 stop but it. He, well, he, I'll stop, stop it. it. I'm just like, saying stop I had it. it. Like, like NWO Your Kevin Hulk. Nash era or what? Wolfpack, baby, all day okay. long. All right, that's you, fine. Wolfpack, you, all day long, baby. I, all right, Kurt, Kurt, Kurt. I don't mean to cut you <laughs> off, but this is where this is what happens sometimes with Omar. He that's tequila in his in his friggin' bottle over there. He tried to tell me the other day that the Rock was a chooch, and I almost hopped on a plane to Houston to whoop his candy ass. Yeah, it's Omar, it's you unbelievable. Better, you better smell what JD's well, cooking. Hold Omar. on, now. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. To my defense, okay. I did not say The Rock was a chute. I said you, Dwayne Johnson is a chute. Nope. That is – listen, I'll throw the flag and we'll go to instant replay. <laughs> this is BS. You said The Rock was a chute. Half of America now hates you. So, like, you got to you gotta know your role. You know what I mean? Like, you got to know your role. Dude, like, I remember on Monday nights in high school in the 90s, we would pack into my buddy Scotty's yeah, yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. And we would, like – watch monday night raw. raw and we would like go outside and like sneak smoking cigarettes and stuff yeah. like that and like yeah. you know get, get like a little bacardi and have like a little cocktail yeah. and be like yep. we're watching raw you know yeah. it was, it was like, it in was college like, everybody yeah. would be doing the drinking beers and like monday night football like didn't even exist back then because it was raw's war I didn't even care. Was like, it was boring football at that yeah. point you know, yep, so I'm like, uh, and the and the Lions never got a Monday night game, so it was rustling. You know, that was right. Like, <laughs> yep, yeah, that was. Yep. It, what's but... what's Stone Cold doing this week? You know, it, uh, yeah. good, God, oh, oh, good stuff. Wasn't he? Good stuff. Uh, and again, I uh, we'll we'll save it to part two. But what did you, now, Omar? Tell me, you watched the A and E behind the stories of the wrestlers, like Stone Cold. Story. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, of course. Holy moly. Holy moly. Yeah, some really deep yeah. stories there, man. Especially like uh towards the end, like when things kind of started to get a little dark, you know, like when uh you know with uh with the Owen. Um, oh god, I know you know, all that stuff is just it got really bad yeah. and 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 man, it just really I don't know, it put a lot of that it put a lot of that time into perspective for me because you know, I remember a lot of those guys, I remember their energy and and just kind of the yeah. way they were, and then you know, just to find out that their their personal lives were weren't uh, weren't always the best. It was man, it was kind of kind of sucked. But... They gave everything to the fans. They gave everything yeah, uh, to... exactly. That was that was my yeah. That's what I took away from that. Is they that didn't you know, have they didn't have boundaries, man. They yeah. just gave and gave and gave. Yeah. Because I think a lot of those guys thought that wrestling was a pipe dream in the first place, and then it became mainstream, and they had to keep giving. And yeah. the poor guys just didn't, uh, you know, they yeah. they didn't take care of it, a lot of it at home, but super right. inspiring and like i have to watch stuff like that because that i swear it all hits me i'm like it, it just puts everything into perspective for you right i mean it, it, it really it really allows us to see a broader scope of the world and and uh other people's perspectives on, yep. on the way yep. some people away, might right? find it while reading the wall street journal i find it while watching the stone cold steve austin documentary on a &E. yeah 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 <laughs> All right, and on that note, <laughs> on that note, thanks everybody for watching. Kurt, thank you again, man, for uh, yeah, for joining you, tonight, man. What a great, what a great time. You guys rock, man. Keep up the good work, and I'll be, uh, I'll thank be watching. You. So I'm smart, and I'm learning all the stuff that's going on in the hobby. There you go. All right, thanks a lot, everybody, for watching. We appreciate you guys. Love y'all.
Peace. Peace.